this problem, we have a car that's going around an unbanked curve. So let's say it's going into the board and curling to the left. We have, if it's curling to the left, it's trying to be pushed outward, so the static friction force is holding it in place, and the centripetal acceleration is towards the inside, so that's where our, our centripetal acceleration is pointing. And we also know that we have a weight of the car and a normal force acting up from the tires. Okay, now we want to find out, knowing that the static coefficient of friction of car A is 1.4, static coefficient of friction of car B is 0.95, we know the maximum velocity that car A can take the curve at is 22.5 meters per second. What is the maximum velocity that car B can take it at? Now knowing these two with car A, we're going to be able to figure out exactly what the radius is of this. Now, just some formulas we know. We have Fs, Fn. Fs is equal to mu Fn. Okay? And that's one formula. The other formula we'll need is the centripetal acceleration. We know centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. Okay, so let's just sum the forces here. Let's do a sum the forces in the x direction, so mass times acceleration in the x direction. I'll define my axes as x positive this way and y positive in the up direction. X positive this way because I have two forces in this way it makes it easy. So the sum of the forces, the only force acting in the x direction is a static coefficient, or the static friction force. So we have Fs is equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction, which is just the centripetal acceleration. So instead of AC going here, I'm going to put in what it's equal to, v squared over r. Okay. In this equation, I don't know m, I don't know v, no, I do know V, it's 22.5. I don't know M, I don't know R, I don't know FS. But I do know that FS is equal to mu FN. So I'm going to put that in. Mu FN equals M V squared over R. Okay. Now the one thing I'm missing is FN. Also missing M and R. But if I can sum the forces in the y direction, I can figure out what Fn is. There's no other forces in the y direction, so I know sum of the forces in the y is equal to zero because there's no y acceleration. So I can just say negative w plus normal force equals zero. So from this I know that Fn is equal to w. My normal force is just equal to my weight weight is equal to mg. So instead of fn here, I can put mg in there. So mu s mg equals mv squared over r. m's, I divide both sides by m, they cancel out. So I'm left with mu s times g equals v squared over r. Now I know mu, g is just constant, I know v, so I can figure out what my radius is. So if I say radius equals, that's me multiplying the radius up here, I'm left with v squared, divide mu s and g, r equals v squared over mu g. Plug my numbers in, 22.5 squared over mu times g, mu is 1.4, g 9.8. So I find that my radius is equal to 36.9. Okay, so we figured out what the radius is. Now we know that the car B is going around this corner with a static coefficient of friction of 0.95. We know the radius is now 36.9. We have the same force diagram here. So we do basically the exact same thing. We can say that mu mg is mv squared over r, or mu g equals v squared over r. So I say mu times g is equal to v squared over r. Mu is 0.95, g is 9.8, v squared is what we don't know, and r we know now, but I'm going to multiply it up here, so it's 36.9 is equal to v squared. So I multiply all those out, and I can square root them. Give me my
my velocity. So V equals 18.5 meters per second.